What is up, everybody? Joe Everest, the Fence Expert, coming to you live from the last day of Fence Tech 2023 here in OKC with the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Warner. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Matt, for like, I, I usually say for like the four or five people that don't know, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who you are, but maybe, maybe someone's new to the industry and hasn't met you yet. Uh, could you give a brief introduction, maybe? Well, um, okay. I'm a uh, simple farm kid from Nebraska. My name is Matt Warner, and we started a fence company in 2009, a software company in 2013, fabrication shop in 2014, uh, youth sports complex in 2018. Um, holy cow, what a, oh, USS, Unlimited Sports Solutions. Uh, we started that in uh, 2020, is it 2020, Ron? Yeah, 2020. So I call myself a serial entrepreneur because I I, um, I just love business. And uh, he, I, I'll give you a nugget. You okay. ready? So, I'm ready. and by the way, I stole this from Jim Rohn. Jim okay. Rohn is, is one of my heroes. He, he, he's not no longer uh, alive now. But uh, he said, don't be a follower, be a student. Okay. Um, right. So I always tell people, listen, don't do what I do. Do what, what you want to do and what you do. You need some water, Joe? Yeah, some I'm gonna water, grab water right there. Real quick. We should we should You're the main guy here, so don't don't go down on me. Don't don't you go dying on me. I'm just trying to <laughs> act like I've done this before. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I I'll tell you this. I, I love business, I love people, um, I'm passionate about culture. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I was I was just um, uh, talking to some people about taking care of your people and caring about and loving on them and, and letting them know. And that's, that's kind of my passion. Um, I'm, I'm also kind of a hot mess myself sometimes. So, uh, I, I fully admit that, um, lately I've figured out how to put on my own oxygen mask, yeah. um, and, and, uh, take, take care of myself also because that's important. But so that's Matt Warner. Holy cow. I went way too long. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, I think that's well put. I really do. Um, so Matt and getting into a little bit of that. So, uh, Tuesday is it? Was it back on Tuesday that or Wednesday you gave it? No, it was Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon Tuesday, at three yep. o'clock. Um, it seems like a really long time ago sitting here right now. But um, you gave a talk that I think could be described as impactful. It could be described as I. It was impactful to me. That's how I would describe it. But talking to people who were also in the room, I mean, it. You moved a lot of people just by being. I literally moved them. Open. I literally moved them because I made them get right. up out of their seats that's true. and that's go true. to the outside of the room. That's true. <laughs> that's true. We did uh, We did a version of the Monday morning meeting. Which I really think it's our secret sauce to who we are. I and agree. Um, I, I, it's something that uh, I drummed up uh, because we had a contractor that wanted us to do um, uh, toolbox talks. Okay. Uh, so yeah. we had to do toolbox talks. So this started when we had about uh, 10 people. Okay. I think 10 people. All right. So we would get every Monday morning, we'd get around, we'd do a toolbox talk. Well, then I started a adding some life skills. And then I thought, well, I could add a leadership skill. So every single Monday, and I'm very passionate about this for anybody out there and you want to know more about this, or if you want to come to Nebraska, come and join us. I, I, I'm, we are an open book. Uh, we would love to have you come in. Uh, hi, Miss Jackie. Hey, uh, we'd love to have you come in and see our, our Monday morning meeting, and, and and we do it. And I'm I'm telling you, I know that it's expensive to have all of your people there, not because you're paying them to be there, but because of the work that you're not doing. Right, right. Well, both, yeah. Right. So um, I'm I'm super excited about the Monday morning meeting. I'm excited to share it with the industry. Um, I've I've went and uh, did one with uh, Dan Blanc. Okay. Uh, I've, yeah. I've went around and done some Monday morning meetings for other people and. Uh, I love, I love sharing that experience because I think it gives you an opportunity to make your people better, and yeah. that and that's really what we want. Well, I think it becomes it's always important. I think it becomes more important as your team grows. One thing that I found is as as the teams grow, they tend to silo off, right? They tend to to hang with the, with their groups. The fabricators hang. The fabricators, the field guys hang with the field guys. Yeah. The, yes, everyone kind of has their own cliques. Absolutely. But by getting them all in the same room, the same time, and the same day, they can look each other in the eye, and they they can reconnect with each other. Right. Yeah. So our goal is is to have everybody there. Uh, um, 
so we have a lot of general managers, uh, like even Ron, that the president of the USS team yeah. and, and runs that. He's there. Yeah. Um, he does some talks once in a while. Okay. He actually did a whole uh, six week series um, on something that he was passionate about. So he shared six weeks in a row about a leadership skill, and uh, uh, it was great. Uh, I keep seeing people that I know, <laughs> and I love it. That's what I love about FinzTech. People that don't come to FinzTech, listeners that are out there, I'm going to yeah. change. By the way, I'm going to change hey, subjects. let's do it. Let's change Enough gears. about Monday morning meetings. Everybody knows. If you want to know more about Monday morning meetings, come talk to me. Sure. Here's what I love about this FinzTech, and, and, and I'm a, I am love the AFA. I love the, the group of people uh, that we get to, to be around and to be with. But coming here, you're sitting with like-minded people yeah. that want to yeah. do better and i don't know joe how long have you been in the fence industry long time a long time well so uh 27 28 years something like that don't you feel that right now the industry is as ethical and as strong absolutely and as friendly as that it's ever been and it can only get better yeah. it really can keep growing and i i blame guys like you uh, that are out there promoting good business practices. I blame uh, Sean King. Yeah. I, I blame um, the, the the Seegers family, the the Bennett yeah. family. Those yeah. those people that are out there that are being nice and working with guys like me that brought me in. By the way, sure. I'm first generation. I yeah. just I'm brand new to this industry. 2009, folks. Uh, I burned the boat on August uh, 25th of 2014. I finally gave up there my day go. job. Yeah. So I'm I am as young in this industry as probably anybody in this room, uh, in this entire building, I love it. People are embracing me and, they, and they're just accepting who we are. Absolutely, you know, and, and we talked about, we've talked about this before that I think we're finally to a place in the industry that we're getting away from the, my secrets are my secrets and your secrets are your secrets and we're yes. not gonna share, we're gonna compete with each other. I think we're finally getting away from that. We're realizing that, well, if we work together in in a fair and legal way, we're not colluding right. we or any of we that. We don't want to share but, prices, right. But but if we're working together to make each other better, at the end of that, we're both better. A absolutely. And, and what do you always say? Yeah, rising tide raises all the ships. I love that saying, by the way. The first time I ever heard it was down in Springfield when you said it. And, and now I've, I've used it all the I use it with our own people. I talk about it all the time, that if we are all doing better together, then all the boats raise up together. So And, that, and um, that's what we're trying to do with, with this show, with any of the, any of the social guys. And, and I say social guys, you know, there's a lot of guys. Like Victor Vasquez was, on, was over here yesterday talking to, to Dan and Nathan. There's a lot of guys that are just active in Facebook groups, active right. in the social channels, honestly trying to help other contractors, right? right. And there's there's some there's there's some not for, not so helpful things in these groups as well. But overall, I think the idea is that we're all trying to help each other get better, because in turn, then we get to work in an industry that's better. Yes, yes, I, I agree. I I love it. For anybody that's never been to Fence Tech, that's out there listening, please give it a shot. Give it a try. I know it's a commitment. I know it's a, it costs money. But you, I, I promise you that if you stop and take time to talk to some people, you will learn. And, and now with the continuing education, the classes, yep. uh, there's just so much here to learn and, and so much knowledge to share. You, you can't hardly afford not to attend. Right. right? Like I agree. There's so much value jam-packed into a couple days, into one show floor. You know, and talking about the cost of it, if you really wanted to just tip, dip your toes in the water and come to the show portion, the, the trade show, almost every vendor has show floor tickets available. Absolutely. Right? So you, you could you, reach out to any of the vendors. Absolutely. I've never, ever turned anybody away that, that wanted help getting into the show because I really believe this is, this is, this is part of the secret sauce. Well, and, and here's the thing, Matt, is it's more than just checking in with vendors. That's definitely part of it. But as we're looking out here, we're seeing contractors talk with contractors. We're talk, people are catching up. People are being introduced to other people. That's really what's going on here. Now, there are vendors booths. Those are important. I don't, I don't want to say they're not, but the, the human to human interaction here, I think, is what the real value is. This, I, I love it. I love it. Literally, there's people sitting right outside of this, uh, of the no before you go studio. Bingo, that's right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I almost yeah. forgot the name of our studio. Hey, I'm, 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 I won't tell Dylan. I'm a hot mess. Thank you, Dylan Blanc. Shout out to Dylan <laughs> Blanc for the name. But I, I, I love this. Uh, I've, I've got some of our people here. My yeah. son's here watching. Candace is here watching. By the way, Candace is new to the fence industry. She knew nothing about fence. She's now she's leading our estimating department. Very good. Uh, here's Very another good. nugget for those people out there. Yeah. Don't be afraid to reach outside of our industry to bring people into this in industry. Agreed. I, I'm telling you. I introduced you to one of our PMs uh, yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and he, he came, uh, not the medical world. What did he say? Clinical. Clinical, clinical world. world. So he come from the clinical world, and now he is he is one of our top project managers. Uh, and we have several that are really good, but yeah. he is he brings a different light to it, and he brings a different way of do of doing it. So another nugget. I think that's important. You can bring other skill sets into your business. And Absolutely. We we talked about this yesterday with the Bennetts in that. You know, we talk in that in that instance. We're talking about the next generation going and spending time in other in other organizations and in other industries, maybe, and then bringing that experience in. But you can do that even without having another generation. You can just simply bring people in from other industries and Absolutely. still gain that experience. Absolutely, I, I, I love it. So th there's another nugget, right? Yeah. I, I'm learning. I learned, and I learned that at uh, three years ago. I, I was at a fence tech, and I was talking to three or four, and they're like, "There's." You, you got to stop looking for people that have fence experience yeah and you got to bring in people that have life experience and then and then plug them into the fence industry absolutely you know when we're when we're hiring people say for the field we go out of our way to hire folks with no experience because we really want to train them to our culture to our methods to our processes mm -hmm. that sort of thing so I think I think bringing in people without those preconceived notions and without those just built-in habits is really beneficial. I think it is too. You got to hire for culture. What else, Joe? Well, so it's been a great show. It's been a great booth. I want to say thank you for letting me be part of this. I mean, you've been so gracious to make this spot available uh, to, to myself, to Dan, to everyone to be doing interviews. And this was your vision. This is, this mm. is your idea come to fruition. I just, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to host shows here. I want to say thank you for you being a friend. For oh, you being a that's very nice. I've already given you one hug today. That's all you're getting. <laughs> uh, no, I, I seriously, I, I really think that if you want your business to grow, help others grow theirs, and they will they will in turn help you. Yeah. So, um, my passion is to try to help you and and uh, Dan and and Cannon and and whoever else wants to be a part of it. You know so. Sure. You know what? We, I would love some feedback from your your viewers. Yeah, absolutely. On if if this is something over the next four to six months, if people got anything from here. And by the way, we interviewed you interviewed some people that a lot of they don't they don't brag about who they are. They're very humble. Right. Right. Um, right. But boy, Everyone we've interviewed has been that way to where you could pass them on the show floor. They'd say hello, but you really wouldn't know. You wouldn't really know the impact they have in the industry, right? right? Exactly. They would, just, they would simply say hello and ask you how the show is, and, and, and they'll on. never brag about how many hours they volunteer for the AFA or for you know Bobby Bachelor. Right. Great. That guy great is a example. very very busy human. Yeah. Very busy uh, with Seegers. Um, he's the implementer, right? Yeah. Um, yep. They're the three-legged stool also going on there. I yeah. always brag we that uh, about Jamie that. Scott and I are the three-legged stool, and each one of us is completely different. Um, uh, Scotty uh, is the, the very uh, quiet, uh, loving, kind, will listen to you um, part of the stool. Jamie, well, we haven't really figured out his strength yet, but, but Jamie uh, can... <laughs> <laughs> uh, can execute uh, um, unbelievably and get his team rolling the right way. And then I'm more of the, the visionary, the guy. I say, yeah. what do you think of this? So uh, we're the three-legged stool. Uh, but anyhow, Bobby Bester is extremely busy, but he's yeah. now the president of the AFA, which requires right. a ton of time. Yes. So we need to say thank you to all of them, to the Sam Williams. Mm -hmm. to, uh, I, I can't think of all of them, but there's a well, ton we of those. We were just talking to Michael Reed. Michael Reed. Holy great cow. Great example. Uh, what a great human he is. Uh, you know, uh, I will tell you, a little plug for him. If you get a chance to talk to him about culture, that guy that guy knows culture and he gets it. I uh, um, I I really admire him. The AFA knocked it out of the park. Tony Thornton uh, left 
the AFA in great hands with him uh, as an executive director. Agree. Uh, so hats off to Tony Thornton for being uh, such a great, humble human being to be able to pass that torch off. And, and uh, I consider all of them uh, friends um, in this industry that, that just embraces people. Yeah, it's, I, I, I feel fortunate to be in this room with these people at this moment, just because everyone here is kind of of the same mind that we're all here to help each other. You know, really I, I could are. go meet someone new. You introduced me to some incredible people this week, and, and each one of them, really, I could go to them with any problem I have. I, well, I don't feel like there's a wall there. And I blame them for our success because success leads clues. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, yeah. And when you start, when I became a student of the industry and I started watching the Seegers and the Bennett's and, uh, and, and the Russ Kirchers and, and those people, they left clues. Success, successful people leave clues. And that's why I say, don't be a follower, be a student. Yeah. Uh, and grab those clues. And when somebody says, hey, we diversified into porta potties. That's not a bad idea. Right. Now, I, I took that one away right, <laughs> right in the back of my mind. I thought, okay. I think it's great. Um, and, and, it, and it fits in our thing. You know, sure. we, we have, um, I don't know, what do we have, four or five businesses, and they all accent each other. Uh, yes. But they're all just a little bit different also. So, so, but I learned that from Steve Bennett. And, it, and it's funny hearing you say that you're a follower of these guys because I was having these thoughts while I'm interviewing them where, Yo, know, Ben's talking about how he's a visionary and, and Bobby really came in as the implementator. And I'm like, who else do we're, I know that's a visionary yeah, that, I, I that brings it. on implementators? And, I, but, and then Steve was talking about starting new businesses that complement his businesses because his business saw a need and he solved his own need. I thought, who else do I know that starts multiple businesses that help each other? Like, it's really obvious. You're sitting there picking up the clues that are left behind and implementing them. It, it really is. It, I, I'm telling you, it, this, this is a, uh, a phrase that I heard somebody say probably seven, eight years ago that success leads cl leaves clues. And if you are smart enough to, to, to not want to be a follower, to not, to not want to do exactly what everybody else does, but to grab that clue and then make your own sauce, yeah. you'll have success. And, and that I hope your listeners understand that that it is a grind and every, every single person that you interviewed will go back to their roots of the wheelbarrow and and yep. uh, a shovel and, and literally doing the work themselves and and i've i've i hope that my my kids uh, my son my son and my two daughters i hope they want to be in the industry sure. but i will tell you benjamin dug a lot of holes yeah. and uh Melissa and Ashley have cleaned a lot of toilets, but that's a part of how I want to bring them along. And then someday they'll see clues and pick them up. They'll and, start and, picking and up keep clues building them. Yeah, absolutely. We've got we've got a few things. To, uh, uh -oh. We've got Brandon Bader here says Matt is as a true true believer in the importance uh, in the importance of culture. He sincerely cares for each and every employee. Oh, that's very nice, Brandon. I think I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, let's see, Bo Butler's got a comment in here. Let's see, the, the hub and spoke model from yesterday, so talking about Ben Seegers, is yeah. my nugget from the show. Thank oh, you guys that's great. for bringing the Fence family together. I've not met all of you yet, but we speak of you like family. I agree. And, and guys, Matt has absolutely been the orchestrator of Stop. this. Stop. Oh, okay. You, you put it together. Enough. You put it together. All right. We're going to kick Joe out of his own booth. <laughs> He's going to start kicking That's me enough. in my shins here That's in a minute. That's enough. I told him to stop it. This is a team effort. I did not do this. All I did was planted a seed, and, and everybody else did it. I, I will tell you, I'm proud of our team. Our team came here. They set this up. They, they yep. did all this. And when I got here, it wasn't even the way that I had it all drawn out. Jamie knows that he has the freedom to make his own choice, to change things the way, uh, the way he wants to, and to be who he wants to be um and uh, by the way uh, brandon is a great human being i i uh, i like him a lot he's well, he one had of my a comment earlier that said matt you look good but i ignored that one totally because <laughs> it's like we're just gonna leave that one out the, so they matt have a, not need encouragement they put a filter on here uh, to, <laughs> is that what it was yeah yeah Could i you told him i put one on me i don't yeah, i don't know yeah. i don't well, it's not that good of a filter. Oh, no, oh, I'm kidding. Oh, good. Oh, does that, thanks. Yeah. Does that mean? <laughs> no. I love it. This so, is good uh, stuff. So, well, Cole, you know Cole here. says, uh, uh, Matt supports his community like no other. Thankful for everything he's done for me. That's the kind of guy you are. It really is. So, let's talk for a minute. You, 
I walked in yesterday morning before all this was going on. I walked up and there's a team meeting going on. Oh yeah. And you yeah. weren't even a part of it, right? No, I actually I, I had a great meet. I had a I had started talking to Ben. I was uh, so I'm struggling with some things in our business right now, and and I'm struggling understanding. So I was talking to Ben Seegers, um, and I've learned that when Ben Seegers uh, wants to give you a couple nuggets, that you, you you quickly listen. Yeah. So I jumped into a conversation with him that led on longer, and I thought, oh, I lost track of time. But I looked over here, and they were already having their team meeting, which yep. is is what we teach in our uh, that if somebody's not there, pick up the ball and run with it. Well, I think what it showed me, you. I've heard you say this a lot, where you hand off batons. Absolutely. You hand off irons in the fire. I always say, my, my, my saying is this, people say, Matt, you have a lot of irons in the fire. And I always say, I don't have any. My goal is to not have any. If I have to pick up an iron, that's a problem. I want to stoke the fire. And I just want to give them all the resources and take care of them the best that I can and be the fire that keeps it burning. But I don't want to hold an iron. And I'm, I, I was just talking to um, Apex Fence. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, and he was asking me about our nettings uh, systems. A little plug out for can I do a plug? Absolutely. So Unlimited Sports Solutions uh, is a great company for anybody out there that wants to get to diversify your company. Look into Unlimited Sports Solutions. Uh, matter of fact, right here's one of our newest clients that's just walking up here. He called me up. He said, Matt, I have a netting job. I said, Great. I'm going to hand you over here to Unlimited Sports Solutions, and they're taking care of him. But uh, this is a, a dream of mine that I had, because uh, I think the fence industry needs more than just fence. Uh, we, need, we need to grow what we're doing. We are very, very hardworking, talented people. We don't need to always just dig a dang hole and put a post in the ground. That is part of who we are. Yeah. Keep yeah, doing absolutely. that. But why not, why not grab a few other things? I, I, understanding revenue, all right, I'm gonna, all right, I should probably stop. Go, I, could no, go, no. I could go on for hours, but understanding revenue we're, per person is huge. We're here until one o'clock, so you okay. just. Well, roll. we're not gonna go that long, I promise. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm passionate about growing revenue per person. When you can yeah. go put in two dugouts, and you can sell those two dugouts for thirty to forty thousand dollars, with with labor margin, um, uh, overhead, uh, the the material and everything. And you can do that in a day and a half, with two or three people. Figure figure that out, folks. Yeah, it's a no brainer. And also, here's the other thing: stop worrying about how much the material costs and start worrying about how efficient you are and what you do. Okay. I'm telling you, I've, I've, learned, I've learned this recently. By the way, we all buy material for a very similar price. These, these distributors out here are very good to all of us. They are all very, very good at taking care of all of us. Use your distributors for, for more than just your materials. Use them to help you be organized. Use them to, <laughs> use them to take care of you. But also, don't get so worried of, uh, about whether you're paying uh, ten dollars and ninety cents uh, per foot uh, for some chain link or uh, eleven dollars and twenty cents. Sure. Worry more about your efficiencies in the field and getting the job done and build and getting off of it, so you can start new revenues. Absolutely. I can't tell you enough that that is the secret uh, to to generating more revenue is to be efficient in the field. If you're a hot mess out in the field. Figure out a way, go out there and spend some time with your team. Go challenge your team and say, what do we have to do to be better? Sure. Doggone it. Do, be more efficient, get that job done. All right, so that's my rant about that. Okay. But I will tell you that we need to stop worrying so much about the price of them. I mean, be cautious about it, obviously. That's a no brainer. Right. But also you have to have good material. I, I just heard a, a young man from Ameristar say to me today, um, you can do it you can do it the right way or you can do it again fair so fair. so i really believe that by putting in good material good products by putting in a good dugout that is fast and efficient that you can generate revenue why wouldn't you look for more baseball fields and more dugouts to put up well absolutely and on the conversation of just expensive materials not being afraid of expensive materials you should be marking up your materials anyway Amen. I I really enjoy working with expensive materials. I love expensive material. Because then when you get into the markup, <laughs> your business does your business does better by default. Yes, sir. So talking about UCC, so our US Unlimited Sports Solutions, you yes. guys will be seeing a video. So we actually just shot a video because the padding oh, over there. We did. 
Well, I was I there? I'm using the royal we. So oh, no, okay. <laughs> Braden and Braden, Jeremy, and I did. Uh, but talking about the padding, about how it's easy. And he said, why don't you guys do padding? I said, well, I'm a fence guy. And I don't really feel comfortable with padding. He said, that's what everyone says. I'm glad you said it. Because I'm going to show you some padding over here that's going to change your mind. Absolutely. Absolutely did. I mean, you're, you're talking about one to two tool installations. It, You guys will see the video. But you guys, don't think that just because you're a fencing contractor rules you out from doing other lines of fence or other right. lines of service. I, I'm telling I don't know if I would encourage a fencing guy to all of a sudden have your fencing guys go and install an entire irrigation system on a golf course. That's probably not <laughs> smart. Yeah. Uh, because they are very, very, that's a very tough install. We, sure. we worked for a golf course company and I couldn't believe how complicated they are. But we have very talented people in this industry that are craftsmen and putting together our dugout system that, that we've designed, no. it's very simple. It's a Lego set. It's literally putting together bolts and, and it's simple, simple, simple. Well, that's probably because you come from the side of having installed it. You've been there, you've set all this stuff up and you, now you have the mindset of how can we do this efficiently? Right, and here's the other thing. If anybody out there ever came to me on one of our dugout systems and said, you know what, if you just did this, change this, we would probably do it. We love that kind of thought process. We, we want to make it better, quicker, and more efficient for you, the end user, out in the field. Well, and, and you, it seems like you never stop seeking efficiencies either. So I watched a video, you did a live video of the Dragon Machine. Yes. Uh, the, with the railing. Wasn't that cool? I'm amazed. Like, <laughs> I loved it. So the little wheel in my head started turning. I'm like, where could we use one of these? <laughs> and then I remembered, I was like, all right, I've made a promise to myself that we are we were making ourselves better this year. We're not finding new uh -oh. toys. Uh -oh. and, so as my uh -oh. group is out here watching, I'm telling you, I had to make a promise to Sarah, our CFO, that I would not start a new business or build another <laughs> building in 2023. Sounds so uh, so I, I am doing the same. And she said, no more expensive equipment this year. Let's get everything working because I get excited about things and everybody will know I've got... By the way, j just for the record, yeah. most of my ideas I have, I throw them away because I know that they're bad ideas, but I just have a lot of them. Well, <laughs> speaking of ideas, this one ended up being a pretty good one, <laughs> well, right? Thank but you. so it's funny, I was sitting, uh, so without going into too much detail, in the evening when we get the kids to bed, my wife takes a bath and I watch YouTube videos, it's just what I enjoy doing, of things that interest me. So I was watching a video about a certain business that would be, it would, it would complement ours. And I'm watching it over and over and over and over. I'm watching these different channels that talk about different intricacies in this business. And so finally one night Taylor walks in and she looks up at the screen. She looks at me and she says, no. What? No. She's like, you've been watching videos for the uh -oh. last week on this particular business. And I know how it would integrate with your business. No, right. we're done. Like for this year, <clears throat> you need to finish. You need to tie up all the loose ends you've already created before you start playing with new businesses. I get the same thing. So Melanie, <laughs> Melanie made the mistake of buying me headphones now. Oh, okay. Because she got tired of me playing all my YouTube videos. By the way, I'm yeah. a huge Bronco fan. For all you people <laughs> out there, if you have a chance to go for a Bronco ride, do it. And if you want to come to Nebraska, I will take you on a very, very exciting ride, let's just say. <laughs> uh, you will want to buckle up for sure. Well, I did see a picture during your talk of the Bronco, and yes. I believe all four tires had left the ground. I will launch that thing. <laughs> I flew it. The, don't, don't tell anybody I said this, but I flew it 22 feet. I had to measure it. Uh, and I think I was three to four feet off the ground, and it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> your, your insurance agent probably isn't watching this. Uh, uh, oh, Ryan, totally if fine. Ryan Glock is out there, this is I'm making this whole story up. It really <laughs> didn't happen, and there's no evidence Complete of it. Complete fiction. Uh, yes. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, by the way, that's the other secret to, to life, is just have a little bit of fun once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, let your hair down. Uh, take some time to, to enjoy life. Put your oxygen mask on. Yeah. and take a deep breath and enjoy life. Well, that, that was part of your talk, right? Was Absolutely. that you had come to the realization that, uh, you, is yeah. that what you wanted to do? I, didn't, I didn't know what this was. Who left this here? It, it's, from the, it's from the Olsen boys. Oh. Go figure. 
Go you know they here. put stickers all over my building once. I saw a video about <laughs> that. Yeah, they put a nice sticker right on your front door. That's awesome. But that's what you're talking about, and that's part of what you're talking about in, in your talk is that you came to the realization through a series of events that led you to realize you hadn't put the oxygen mask on yourself. Absolutely. That you were so worried about making sure everyone else had their mask on that you kind of ran out of breath, right? And you Completely. realized that you needed to put the mask on and focus on that first. And I think that's, guys, that's a key takeaway. And it's something that I took to heart in that, you know, it. I think we can find ourselves running in so many different directions, being pulled in so many different directions because we see so much opportunity. Absolutely. That's why I'm watching this video about this completely unrelated business and I'm like, Gosh darn it, we could do it, and we could do it well. I, yes. We could do it better than these guys, I know I, that. I, I say that all the time. But we get so wrapped up in that, our focus gets so dialed in on that, that we lose focus of other things, right? Absolutely. Ourselves included. And it, we find we, we need to take a minute yeah. and, and take a minute for ourselves, and that's, I took that to heart. Scotty, Scotty, come here, come here, come on. I'm serious. I want to. I want to introduce you. You know yeah, Scott, right? I know Scott absolutely. So, Scott, you have to get really close to this uh, microphone. So Scott, <laughs> yeah. Scott, tell me, tell me one thing that you took away from this show. People. It's always about the people. Uh, just yeah. the, the the fence family that we have is uh, amazing. When we get to come to these shows, we get to see so many, so many people, the up and comers that yeah. are, are starting out. It's great. Absolutely. So, so Scott, Scott is uh, one of my right hand. Scott and Jamie, we are the three legged stool. And um, do I put? The, what do I do with this? I don't know what to do with well, my you hands. I hold it until I, you... I hold it until I sit down. But, but uh, Scott, uh, but this guy, this guy's literally been with me from the beginning. And uh, him and Jamie have been have been such a uh, an important part of who we are. Without him, we 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 would not be in this booth. Uh, we would not have my salesman. We would not have Empire. We would not have ESC. We would not have any of that. These guys are, are have believed in me since we were in my kitchen uh, in 2009, right? No, we actually started building uh, fence together in 2007, didn't we? Uh, as a side hustle, uh, just to, trying to make a little extra money and, and do that. And uh, I want to. I saw him uh, standing out there, so I just want to say I love you, and you're you're awesome. Okay. By the way. He's really, really mad at me right now because he w <laughs> doesn't like to do that at all. So I, I did fair. that on purpose uh, just to make sure that he knows I love him. Well, I think, I think there's a story there too. So building fence as a side hustle with Scott in 2007. Uh, fast forward to we are sitting in an amazing booth and you're surrounded by amazing team. Absolutely. With amazing, building amazing companies, right? So I think this is a takeaway that I think too often when you talk to guys that are just a few years in the industry, they think that's their spot, right? Owner operator, always on the tools. <clears throat> and I think that I think you need to realize that you can take the tool belt off, you can pass the tools to someone that's probably better at it than you are anyway. So so I'll be honest with you, every once in a while I have somebody say, No, I want you to build the fence. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> like, uh, no you don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, that's uh, so. When I was when we were doing when I was doing the residential sales door to door, or not door to door, but in person, uh, that's a, uh, now. Are you going to come build the fence? Oh, believe me, you don't want me building the fence. I could. I did it as a kid, but I'm a bit rusty. I don't yeah. think you want me on the nail gun. No. You and my wife don't want me on the nail no, gun because it no. will not end well. Me neither. Uh, but we hire people that are better at us at a given task. Absolutely. Right, which is probably also. A good tip is that you surround yourself with people that are better at you at a given task. Yes, sir. I'm not great at accounting. I know this might surprise you, but I'm not <laughs> fantastic at accounting. We've got Holly in the office, who, our bookkeeper, who is great at accounting and great at QuickBooks. Right. That was one of the irons I had trouble handing off, though, because I, I like to have my thumb on the pulse. Absolutely. I like to know. So it took a little bit of. It, it might not have been as much of a handoff as it was a hurt taking it from me you know grudgingly or me giving it grudgingly um, but it that's part of this though is you hire people that are better at you at a given task but then you also have to trust them to hand that uh, baton to them or hand the iron to them that is, that is very important my first business I had I tried to do all the books myself and I ran it right in the ground because I, I didn't have that open per, per, percept 
perception of the books. I, I always made it the way I, I wanted to win. So I always, I did the books to look good for me all the time. But yeah. uh, Sarah in our office, I, you know, I got to give a huge shout out to her too. Sarah has been uh, with us since the beginning and, and she literally would come over to our kitchen for meetings. And, and then when we worked out of a storage unit, she would come over to the storage unit and say, what are we doing here? And how come we didn't build this? And uh, so so it's been a, it's been a really fun ride. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, um, being a part of this industry, and I, I just thank God that I, I had the opportunity to come into this business, this industry. Yeah, I think I think we are all better for it. Yeah. One thing I want to touch on too. So we talked about we talked about surrounding yourself with a team. That's great. But you mentioned your insurance agent's name by name, Ryan. Yeah. Right. So I think there's also a conversation here about surrounding yourself with a professional team, right? That that you know and you trust. We've talked about this a little bit. I don't know that we've ever talked about it on the show, but surrounding yourself with a professional team that's that's there for you yeah yes absolutely i i will tell you we've had uh, i don't know melanie could probably tell you we i bet we've had 30 insurance companies come and say i can save you money and as soon as they say i can save you money melanie and and sarah everybody in the front office will tell them you you won't get through the door. You, Matt will not change. You're wasting your time. He is not about saving money. He is about the best service and the okay. best people. And he loves his insurance guy. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Glock took a chance on me in 2009 and he never should have. Um, I, I, don't, I don't even know how he did it because my credit was horrible. Uh, we had no experience in the industry. We had no idea what we were doing. He should have probably never underwrote me. So I told him, I said, I, I am forever grateful and I, I'll probably never leave him. Uh, he always is trying to get us the best rates, but he also wants to get us the best protection. He literally comes out and he's like, Matt, I need to see what you're doing now because you didn't tell me about this and this and this. I'm like, well, I kind of forgot. I got busy. <laughs> right, uh, right. You know, I'm having fun. So he, he is good. But it's the same thing with Kevin Schneider. Kevin Schneider's our attorney. And, and I'm telling you, they are one of the largest, oldest law firms in the state of Nebraska. And he represented me in 2009. He took me under his wing and, and I could not a afford that kind of protection and that kind of knowledge. And, and he's grown to be a great friend. It does help that his son and my son are best friends. So that, sure. that, that does help a little doesn't bit. Hurt, hurt. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, I, helped, I was his assistant on coaching basketball, which I was a wrestler. You should never have a, an assistant as a wrestler on a basketball team. That well, doesn't work. But here's a tip for you, too, on, on coaching kids sports. Always be the assistant coach. Yes, always, absolutely. Always be the assistant yes, coach. Just be I the learned helper. this lesson. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go run third base. You like manage the rest of these. So, but I will tell you, I've surrounded myself uh, with great people. Uh, my bonding agent uh, uh, comes to my Bible studies. Uh, our um, our banker uh, has been to my, our Bible studies. He's a good friend of mine. Also, he comes out randomly for Bronco rides and, and to uh, visit. But. Uh, I've surrounded. I've been very fortunate. Uh, the good Lord's put so many good people uh, in in front of us and around us, and and I just embrace them. And and uh, matter of fact, uh, a couple of years ago we did a, a thank you dinner. Uh, it was a couple years. I think it was a couple years ago. And 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 we inv I invited a, core, a few of our core group people, but I mostly invited the people that we do business with. Yeah. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you. So I, we rented a room and we fed them a prime rib dinner, and I just wanted to to let them know and let them see who we are because without without the, the Ryan Glocks and without the Kevin Schneiders and without the Jim Kings and without uh, um, uh, Andy at the, at the bank and, and without um, Kurt Schluter at the bank, without those guys, I would, I would not be here. Yeah. I wouldn't, we, this could not have happened. Well, and I think that's the takeaway I was wanting to get to is you got to keep yourself surrounded by these professional friends. Absolutely. Right? Because they make things like this happen. One thing we talk about is is how important it is to start a relationship with your banker before you need the relationship with your banker. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's and and you probably want to start your relationship with your lawyer before you need the relationship with a lawyer as well. Absolutely. But and those people need to know each other, right? Like they need to work together. They need to know your business intimately. And I think I think too often. So talking about insurance, I think too often maybe contractors are hesitant to let the insurance agent into the office because they think, well, maybe they're looking for things or maybe they need to, they need to know every nook and cranny. Absolutely. They need, we have to be protected and we hope that we never can use it. And it, and it's hard to understand that. And I, I trust me, I, I see our insurance bill every month. <laughs> yeah. 
I can imagine. It's more than I paid the first five years of doing business. And it, and it scares the heck out of me. And I don't understand um, always this money and what it is, but you have it there so you never have to, you, that you hope you never have to use it, but you have to have it and you have to be protected. And, and a matter of fact, um, uh, the, the AFA is going to be doing a series on um, uh, insurance and contract protection. And I, nice. I highly encourage all the listeners, please plug into it, uh, follow it, listen to it, because it's really good stuff. I learned a lot about that here at the AFA at Finstech. Absolutely. I think that's something that everyone needs to get plugged into because insurance is such it's such a big topic, and it's—I I feel like it's largely misunderstood to newer contractors of how important the insurance is to the company. I agree. It, it could be the difference between building fence tomorrow and not building fence tomorrow. Heaven forbid, should something happen today. Yes, sir. Matt, thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I mean, this guys, could, this could not happen without you. So don't say any more about this booth because if it wasn't for you and Dan and Cannon, uh, I would have not had been confident enough to do this on my own. So, 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 so you give me the confidence to, to, to go big or go home like this. And, and, and I hope that I can be the confidence to some of our people, to uh, other, other industries that I can say, listen, uh, look at it, it. My stick is now, my new stick is, I graduated 110 out of 112. <laughs> If I can do this, anybody can really do it, but you have to be focused and you have to be willing to be a student of the industry. Absolutely. Guys, I think the key takeaways here are you got to surround yourself with good people that take care of you and take care of your business, both in your inner team, your company team, but also your professional team. You got to take time to take care of yourself. Right? Yes, you got to make sure that you're the best you you can be so you can be there to be a servant to your team, to be the best servant you can to your team. Absolutely. Um, I, there's there's more gold nuggets in here. Be sure to pass off the gold, the uh, baton, pass off the torch. Uh, that's something I'm struggling with at the moment. I'll tell you a quick story. I used to go get our mail myself because I wanted to see what was in the mail. I want, you know, what I was looking for? Checks. Checks. I wanted to see how many checks were coming in that day. Yep. And we we hired uh, we hired a, a incredible lady that helped us with our office. And she said, Joe. Why are you going to get the mail? Do you do you think you might could do some more higher level stuff? Can you magically can make one appear? <laughs> You're right. That right, nobody right. else can. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I just I like to know. She goes, well, what if I got it and I let you know what checks were in there? Uh, we'll try I, it. I'll be honest with you. I hate getting the mail. I I don't like windshield time. Yeah. I I, I a matter of fact, whenever I was running a job, I would always be like, who wants to go run an errand? And they're like, well, why don't you want to go run the errands? I hate running errands. <laughs> I hate being lost in Home Depot. I hate yeah. all that stuff. I want to be here physically doing something. So, uh, but I agree with you. Don't be afraid to hand it off. You got to hand. You got to hand things off to the team. You got to trust your team and know that, you know, you're greater as a whole than you are the individual. Some some piece of the parts. I agree. Did I say that right? I don't yes. know if I said that right. You, you nailed it, guys. There's a lot here to. There's a lot of gold nuggets here to dig out. There's a lot to unpack here. So. Rewatch it if you'd like. Uh, this will be this is a live video, obviously, but it'll be recorded on uh, on the YouTube page. You can also find it on the my salesman page and the Empire Fence page. Matt, thank you so much. I, I promise I will. You said don't thank you anymore, but I'm gonna thank you one more time for for making this happen because I couldn't broadcast this either if I didn't have an amazing booth. So it's it's a good yeah. That's our it's honor a good to have you in here. So. Matt, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. You're very welcome. Uh, we will see you. The next Fence Tech is next year. Yes. Nashville. Yes. But it's in January. Oh, it is. I, I did not January. know that. Wow. Well, that's good. I don't good. have the dates right off the top of my head, but I did see a banner walking out the door that said it was January. Okay. So, January uh, what? Anybody know? January? Nobody knows. None, none of our It's the end of January. So it's 20 towards, something of okay. January. 24. I don't know. I don't want to say Highly it's encourage everybody to try to get there. Right. 23rd through the 26th. Thank you so much. Uh, of January, we'll be in Nashville. You want to talk about a good time? That's a great town. This, it's. I'm excited and, and scared at the same time because <laughs> we're going to be in the arena. I'm sure that's right there on Broadway. Yeah. You walk out those doors and you walk right into every into honky tonk in Nashville. Oh yeah. Been so there. We might. Uh, uh, day one might be a little. Or day two might be a little slow. After I, I will one. tell you. 
I would love feedback from you, Joe, from your yeah. from your following people. You have a sure. tremendous following. I love feedback if people got anything out of this at all. So we know if we should keep doing something like this. Uh, and anybody out there that that appreciates this or or wants to be a part of this, yeah. to, uh, give us a call and let us know. Well, absolutely. Is there someone in the industry that you haven't heard from that you know that you think the industry should hear from? Absolutely. I Let's think do it. that's. Listen, I was incredibly humbled to be able to interview the the gentleman that you introduced me to, to this weekend, all of yeah. them. So, but we know there's probably more there's out more. there, more silent yeah. giants out there, and we would love to we would love to meet them. So, if if you know someone that we haven't talked to and we haven't interviewed, yeah, give us the feedback. Please do. Let yeah. us know how it went. Uh, good, bad, and indifferent. Let us know how it went, guys. For now, I'm Joe Everest with Matt Warner, uh, and we're both reminding you that good finches make good neighbors. Absolutely. We'll see you next time.